notwithstanding that a petition has not been presented to him, the president is, on the advice of the Council of State, satisfied that the need has arisen for taking any of the cells referred to in paragraph A, B, and C of clause 1 of this article. He may, acting in accordance with the advice of the Council of State, appoint a commission of inquiry to inquire into the need and to make recommendations on all the factors involved in the creation or treason or measure. Ladies and gentlemen, we've always explained this, that there are two ways. Mr. President receives a petition, he proceeds to follow what the Constitution states. Even if Mr. President does not receive a petition, he, as Mr. President, the Constitution gives him power by Article 5.3 to go ahead and decide to create regions. And we have always explained, if Mr. President had gone by that route, then we in the ministry and other government officials will have had a lot of questions to answer. Why this? Why that? But this one, it came from Article 5.2. There were petitions. So it's always important to make that difference. The difference between Article 5.2 and Article 5.3 is very, very significant. In both cases, however, there was the one thing is constant, the advice of the Council of State. If Mr. President receives petitions, he still has to get the advice of the Council of State. If Mr. President decides to do it on his own, he still has to get the advice of the Council of State before he proceeds. Again, we do your attention to the fact that in the manifestos of the two major political parties represented in Ghana's parliament, in page 67 of the MPP manifesto, there was a discussion of the possibility or a promise to create regions, and in that of the MPP, they were specific of the Western, creation of the Western North. Even though the presidential candidate at that time of the New Patriotic Party made promises when he went around the country, from four regions, but from six areas in these four regions, Mr. President sought the advice of the Council of State. He sought the advice of the Council of State. And that is pursuant to Article 5.2 of the Constitution on the 26th of June, 2017. His Excellency, the President. I should. Okay, fine. Mr. Justice S. A. Brobe, the retired Supreme Court judge, was the chairman. Dr. Grace Bediakun, former government statistician, a member. Professor Kwesi Kwafu Adakwa, former vice chancellor, KNUST, member. Malvi Mohamed bin Saleh, a mayor, a missionary in charge, Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission in Ghana, member. Ms. Grand State, a local governance expert member. Mr. Robert Ajeni, retired director of education, I think the first rector of Bogatanga Polytechnic at that time, member. Dr. David Wellington Esau, senior research fellow, University of Cape Coast, member. Professor George Owusu, to inquire pursuant to the petitions into the need and substantial demand for the creation of new regions, and thereby the alteration of Western region, Brown Ahafo region, Northern region, and Volta region. B, to make recommendations to the president based on its findings on the creation and alteration of regions. And C, to specify the issues to be determined by the referendum and the places where the referendum should be held, where it makes recommendations for the creation and alterations of regions. The CI gave the commission six months to submit their report, but towards the end of the six months, 
the commission wrote to Mr. President a request for extension of time. So, Mr. President, by an CI 107, extended the time for two months to the June ending, end of June 2018. The commission, however, submitted their report on the 26th of June to Mr. President. On the 19th of July, pursuant to Article 5.5 of the 92 Constitution, which states, and again, I'm quoting Article 5.5, the President shall refer the recommendations to the Electoral Commission and the referendum shall be held in the manner prescribed by the Electoral Commission. So, on the 19th of July, Mr. President referred the recommendations to the Electoral Commission. The Commission has recommended that they had established the existence of a substantial demand and the need for the creation of the new regions in all the six petition areas. And that the commission recommended as the constitution by article. Ladies and gentlemen, the commission, as you are aware, proceeded to conduct limited registration exercise from 16th to 25th September and the 25th, 25th August exhibition in those areas. There was the need to have a constitutional instrument to guide any elections. So the Electoral Commission, in conjunction with the Subsidiary Legislation Committee of Parliament, a CI was laid in Parliament on 30th of October for 21 days for it to mature. Others challenged it at the Supreme Court. They first sought to place an injunction on the whole process. That was dismissed. They sought interpretation that not only the petition areas should vote, but the entire people in the region should vote. Eventually, the 21 days will end today. Today. So after today, Parliament will write to, I'm sure, the Attorney General and the Assembly Press, and the CI 109 will be fully gazetted referendum. So since many of you have followed um, the proceedings of the commission, especially your colleagues in the regions where they did public hearings, and you also carried them in your news uh, 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 outlets. So Ghanaians, through you, got to know what was happening. The commission had uh, in-camera sitting and also public hearings in those areas where they received the regions and where they received the petition. Let me add that in the work of the ministry, even before the commission was formed, the ministry sensitized the media, we sensitized the NCCE, we met all the regional house of chiefs of the four regions, Volta region, Western region, Brown Ahafo region, and Northern region. Let me state that any time we met them, we did not meet only the chiefs in the petition areas, no. We met all all the regional house of chiefs members in a region. So we met all of them. The ministry also met the national house of chiefs. The ministry also met all members of parliament from the four regions. We did not meet members of parliament from only a session of the petition, no. All members of parliament in the region. So please, if anybody tells you that we do not consult others who were not in the petition areas, it cannot be correct. It cannot be the case, because we met them. That was the ministry. 
when the commission was also appointed, it was our duty to go and introduce the commission to these key stakeholders. Again, we met, went with the commission. Commission met the regional house of chiefs in all these four regions. Again, they did not meet only the petition areas. They had met the chiefs and people, opinion those who petitioned in Accra, and you covered it at the uh, castle, old castle. That was to understand their petition. But when they went to the field, they met the house of chiefs in the regions. And I'm talking about all. If they went to voter region, it's the voter region house of chiefs from the south to the north. They went to western region, they met western region house of chiefs, an entire western region house of chiefs. So it cannot be the case that some sessions in the region were not consulted. The commission also met all members of parliament from these four regions. All members of parliament. The commission also met them. So it cannot be the case that only a session of people were met and that there were no consultation of other people. So all these things were done and the commission presented their report. Now that the way has been cleared with the Supreme Court interpretation that what the recommendations made by the Justice Bureau Commission was very right, and therefore they should go ahead, and the commission can go ahead and hold a referendum in these areas. And I've also told you that the CI109 will mature by the end of today, Parliament sitting today, and therefore from tomorrow, the commission will have the green light to go about. It, will contain, it contains uh, transfer of votes, voting by proxy, the symbols or colors, and all others that we, we guidelines that we normally have when we are having general elections. Because there's a specific election referendum, there's a special CI for that. And that one too is the duty of the electoral commission to educate Ghanaians about the CI when it comes out. So they will do that. So our mission here today is to let you know, maybe to thank you for all the support you gave us from last year in trying to help explain the issues to Ghanaians and how far we referred for the determination by the referendum under clauses four and five shall not be taken to be determined by the referendum unless at least 50% of the persons entitled to vote cast their votes at the referendum. And of the votes cast, at least 80% were cast in favor of that issue. 50%, now that we know the places where the referendum should take place. So it's a question of adding all the total register votes in that area. 50% of that should turn out to cast their uh, vote. And 80% of those who cast their vote should vote yes before you get your referendum. So it, it, it's driven by the, those who petitioned. And I'm sure if you contact your colleagues in the regions, you might have seen that they have bought their own pickers, they have made their own t-shirts, and they are campaigning. They are, uh, I've been told that some songs have been made for, to, 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 to campaign. So that one is being done solely by the petitioners themselves. What government does, or what government does, 5-8 of the Constitution, if the results come to Mr. President and they succeed, the President shall, under clause 1 of this article, and acting in accordance with the results of the referendum held under clauses 4 and 5 of this article, issue a constitutional instrument giving effect or enabling effect to be given to the results. Now, if the results come and indeed they had 50% turnout and they had 80%, at least 80% voting yes, then Mr. President will um, issue a constitutional instrument leading to the creation of those regions. In anticipation, the budget, the 2019 budget and economic policy has allocated 20 million Ghana cities as seed capital per the new regions for the provision of critical infrastructure to enable the new regions to take off smoothly. 20 million Ghana cities. That's just a seed capital for them. So if they succeed, they have that one uh, uh, to start uh, uh, setting up 
and take care of their regions. So they have, they have that. I'm sure those who are campaigning will bear that in mind. That if they succeed, yes, you have 20 million cities to start, to start working. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to thank you uh, for uh, being present today. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure you want to ask some questions. Uh, we have interacted with you um, in Dakar and in the regions. You have followed us. You have covered the activities of the commission. And if there's anything that you want us to especially more, we are, we are ready to do that. So I thank you very much. Thank you.